is muted there. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Ryzen Intermission Show. Today it is Ryzen 32. We are right in the midst of the intermission. Just got done with the first eight fights of the card. Plenty of action. Hope you've enjoyed. It's been a, been a wild one, as always. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're tuning in for the first time, I am Drake Riggs here at The Scrap. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Do all that stuff. Let's get it out of the way early. And I got to put up the logo, don't I? That would be helpful. There we are. A little less in the corner. I've had some uh, misunderstandings with Yogi Bo earlier. So that is why the stream disappeared for a minute. And if it does again on YouTube, well, we should still be here on Twitter because we're not showing actual footage of the fights so hopefully there are no issues now going forward and uh let's kill some time let's stay awake if you have your coffee get it or whatever you may need and let's talk about what we've seen and what we still have to come uh which is plenty of excitement so let's just go through the cards so far as we've seen kicking things off we had uh, Ryogo Teriyama taking on Hiroki, and my goodness, what an impressive performance from Teriyama, as I'm going to call him, uh, give him that nickname now, <laughs> just as terrible as it is. Uh, the 17-year-old looked fantastic in that one, got about four knockdowns or so until it ended up you know, finishing there at the end. Great performance from him. And then afterward, we saw Sekihara versus uh, Takahiro Kuniyoshi. Um, I believe that was who it was. For some reason, I feel like that is inaccurate uh, looking at my results here. But either way, Sekihara pretty much utilized his wrestling in the first two rounds. And uh, the two started yelling at each other at, in the end of the third round, kind of swinging late and wildly there, which was fun while it lasted but that was a little bit too late uh for the loser on that side Sekihara gets it done just a little bit more dominant overall throughout the fight so he goes on gets the win and then after that we start the first of kind of the Old timers, ageless wonder fights, I guess you could say, because there are a couple on this card showing off the more experienced competitors uh, is rising on this night. So uh, it was Lopez, um, uh, Lopez Satsuma, you know, taking on uh, Miyagi there and not so sure this fight needed to happen <laughs> was not very competitive whatsoever um obviously ended in the first round miyagi looked very good but didn't have the stiffest of competition in the 50 year old lopez but um hey he tried he tried and that's all we can ask for uh as he was the first as i mentioned there of multiple older competitors that will be seen tonight some better than others <laughs> obviously but that brings us right to the fight that happened afterward, which was uh, Shinya Kumazawa, who was 40, taking on Tanner uh, Lorenzo. And the first time we'd ever seen a fighter wear a gi in the Ryzen ring. Now, this has always been legal. It had just never been done before. So we can say he can say that he did that, at least, even though it did not go well and actually essentially lost him the fight <laughs> as uh we saw tanner end up choking him out with his own gi and i mean he didn't go out but he did make him submit so that was pretty ridiculous and right before the submission we saw tanner do some good old stomping some knees you know vintage pride rule exploitation you could say uh, i think joe ferraro on commentary said oh he's going for the vanderlei silva jumping stomp which that was wholly accurate so very fun stuff there and just ridiculous 
for a while it lasted. And what a debut for you know, Lorenzo, who active uh, U.S. military guy, apparently. Um, it seemed like he was having some mouthpiece issues throughout that entire fight, but maybe it was just the inexperience, but I don't know if that makes much sense. Either way, gets the job done. And a submission of the year, because I promise, I promise you, you're not going to see that very and you're not going to see that the rest of the year. So that was some crazy stuff uh, in that one for multiple reasons. So got to love it here at Ryzen 32 as we moved on afterward to uh, Eric Hoga taking on Nisei Mizuki Oshiro, who a deep Jules veteran making her debut in her hometown and also Koga's debut. The Adam Waits, you love to see it. Love to see him get some spotlight. A little bit earlier maybe than you'd expect see what the future holds for both of them uh nisei struggled a bit recently but got back in the win column in her last fight with the mizuki furuse win in the main event but well not but in this one she gets it done again so taking on erikoga who just uh knocked off eru takabayashi was another fantastic prospect uh out of the japanese ladies and in this division in particular so it was a great, you know, a great fight while it lasted. Um, Eric Hoga, I thought there was a solid argument for her getting the win here. And it was a split decision. So I guess that's not a crazy thing to say. I just feel like she was probably overall more effective. And I think that if this fight took place under the unified rules, maybe could have gave it to her. Uh, they were reading off the numbers and, you know, just Nisei did not really land too much in comparison. Yes, she had probably the grappling advantages overall, but I thought Koga defended pretty well, showed some some good skills there and on the feet. You know, it was practically it was practically a striker versus grappler fight. Um effectiveness was in each of those strengths for them. And ultimately judges went with Nisei, which I understand. I'm not mad at it, not a robbery or anything. Very close, very fun. But Eric Koga impressed me a little bit more than Nisei in this one because we've seen more of Nisei. Uh, in her still very short career, but Eric Koga, just 20 years old and now two and one loss doesn't hurt too badly, but look, looked pretty sharp in there. So like what we got from her and uh, Don Harden is here. Thank you so much, Don, for tuning in. Uh, longtime supporter is Don. So appreciate any time I see a comment from her means a lot. And Pat was supposed to be here, but he's an old man. So I'm calling him out. He was going to help me as we used to do. Um, over at that other place uh, when we would do the Ryzen intermission shows. So this is the first one post that other place. <laughs> but uh, yes, Pat can maybe prepare better next time for maybe Ryzen Trigger next week or or Ryzen 33. We'll see. Either way, plan is for Pat to be back with me on the intermission show and uh, just for other videos, as you've already seen here on the channel, of course. So either way, Koga versus Nisei, great fight while it lasted and then we move to the other Miyagi um Yuichi as he was taking on Tomohiro Adin uh Adania um my goodness probably the highlight of the night at least in terms of finishes because Miyagi pretty much hit what felt like a dance move knockout <laughs> I mean he uh they were spinning in air it kind of reminded me a little bit of when uh, Jose Aldo in the Frankie Edgar rematch landed that hook on him while they both jumped. I don't think Frankie went down from that. He might have, but this was a clean knockout. This was like they were rotating and Miyagi gets the knee up there and just right on the chin, like a punch a little bit with his knee. And he was done in, what was it, 47 seconds? Ridiculous. That was some ridiculous stuff right there. So you love to see it. Then afterward, Tatsuya So just being metal as fuck um, <laughs> with the entrance there. Some some serious heavy riffage, some tasty riffs and uh, what looked like kind of a paintball entrance. I'm going to say paintball because <laughs> I hope that was the case because a little bit 
awkward in terms of timing otherwise. And of course, I'm sure he doesn't know what I'm referencing there. Those of you who live in America probably do. Um, if not, I'm still not going to explain. Either way, <laughs> Tetsuya So, very interesting guy who uh, is also an ice cream salesman, right? Or a shaved ice, whatever you want to call it. So that was that. Uh, just an interesting character. And so in this fight, so in this fight, uh, taking on um, Ochi, I mean, it started out pretty pretty nicely where they got in the clinch in the corner and just some nasty work being done. It was kind of like Rock'em Sock'em robots in the clinch version, I guess you could say, to some heavy thudding, thudding thumpers, if you will, um, just trading back and forth with no, no defense. But then after that, OG was just kind of more locked in overall, it seemed like, and uh, more well-rounded, kind of took over after that. Um, so didn't have too much for him there until he flurried late, very, very aggressively. But uh, Oshi was kind of, you know, not bothered by it. And he goes on to get the decision win, which was totally fair. So, yeah. And then what happened just recently, right after that, uh, which we just got done with, is why I'm alluding to. Juri O'Hara, give this man a title shot. Uh, my goodness, what is what else he got to do? Give him a rising title shot. He's already the deep, deep lightweight champion. Uh, takes out Kohei Ta Takeshi. Um, just easy work, easy, easy work. Starts off with kicks very heavily. Goes up high. Goes to the body. Gets the gets the punches on him. Puts him down. And very, very analytical, I know. But he uh, <laughs> gets the job done as he should have. I think that's like seven in a row for jury maybe six at least um that was his second fight in Ryzen. first one was the great performance against yauchi very fun fight in that one ohara is just a fun guy to watch very very exciting guy and should fight roberto satoshi that that should be the title fight i don't see why not i mean yauchi's it was koji takeda was in line right after tofi lost the belt koji loses to yauchi Yauchi has the loss to O'Hara. He's only on two fight winning streak. It's a no brainer to me, unless you want to bring in somebody international, but that's still a gray area. But New Year's Eve, that's the fight to make, in my opinion. So we should go with that. But that was the first half of Ryzen 32. Good start. Pretty, uh, not, not the best start. You know, I got to be painfully honest here. Not the greatest, uh, Start to a card been an all right card though i have enjoyed it as always but you know um more hype coming <laughs> let's put it that way saving the best for last a little bit as we get ready for daryl lokoku and uh bay noah black panther in the the next fight that we will be seeing and bay noah you know he had the the rising debut against uh the dominator right satoshi yamasu and the guy is a very talented striker and Yamasu kind of exploited that by taking him down there was some fun showmanship in that one but ultimately Baynoa couldn't get the job done it doesn't hurt him too bad was his debut as I mentioned now taking on Lakoku who if he's smart we'll just try and take him down even if Baynoa has worked on that which I'm sure he has and he should still his weakness still his weakness so in that fight I'm I, the smart pick is Lokoku, but I think Baino is very dangerous and very capable of finishing that. So look forward to that to kick off. And by the way, you guys, if you do have any questions or whatnot, I probably should have said that earlier, but feel free to ask as we have uh, likely seven, six more minutes here before picking things back up. So just a quick little intermission and figured why not do a show for it anyway. Uh, as I got the message right there from the inside man. But anyway, that's Lakoku versus Bainoa kicking things off. And then afterward, right after that, we get to the crazy shit. <laughs> the crazy shit back to the older guys. So, um, yeah, that'll be fun. And I'm talking about Bobby Olagoon versus uh, Katsuya Kitamura. So, oh boy. Um, and Focus Fights is here from Mr. Chris Gary. Thank you for tuning in, sir. Great to see you. Great to hear from you. Um, I hope people, I should say this as well. If you guys are on Twitter watching, I cannot see your comments. Go to YouTube and you can interact with me. That's the time to do it. Jump on over. I can see that the YouTube stream is still working, thankfully. 
don't fuck with me, Yogi Bo. I'm not having it right now. But uh, yes, Chris, um, how long is it inter supposed to be? 20 minutes. So we're 15 minutes into this show. Should have about five more minutes. So I got to hurry up here. But um, we'll see. We'll see. It's supposed to be 20. No more than 30. But yeah, whenever we're on these kind of events, you guys, just so you know, they're generally going to be 20 minute intermissions. Um, that's just that's just how it goes. 20 to 30 um, for the bigger events like New Year's. Sometimes we get the hour, you know, it depends on the card, really. But either way, yes, Bobby Olagoon versus uh, Katsuya Kitamura is going to be after Lakoku and um, Bay Noah. Can't really make you know, solid <laughs> predictions for that fight or give proper analysis because Bobby has not fought in like, what, 15 years? And then Kitamura only has one fight. And I honestly don't know when that was. I. I admittedly have not followed him very much. And I mean, I haven't followed Bobby too much either, but of course, more familiar with him for the, the K1 crazy fights he had against Bob Sapp, Hongman Choi, Aki Bono. And then I don't remember who his first opponent was, but that's the kind of shit that Bobby does. And Bobby is not, you know, necessarily a real fighter, but, you know, he's got a judo background. Um, spoke to him before this fight. Very funny guy. He, I understand why he's in the TV business, but, um, kind of having fun with this and he's 55 somehow 20 years older than Kitamura who is uh a specimen let's leave it at that so this should be all sorts of bonkers I'm gonna assume I'm just gonna assume that Bobby didn't get any finishes in his his lone wins um so judging by how long it's been I I struggle to see him doing a lot better so I'm just by by default I suppose gonna go with Kitamura and he's well, actually a lot bigger than Bobby than I expected. Bobby just generally takes on bigger guys because that's the spectacle of Bobby Olagoon fights. Should be what it is. <laughs> Let's leave it at that. Um, then after that, we have Tsunabe and Maeda, which should be pretty solid. Uh, you know, another one where both guys are 40, right? So the veteran battle there, I can't, I don't know how that one's going to go, I think. Another tough one to predict. Should be fun while it lasts. And I'm just glad to see these guys getting. I like the theme a little bit. I like the theme of the, the older, more experienced guys. Uh, and, you know, lady in the main event kind of getting <laughs> some shine, I guess. So uh, I, I don't really have a solid prediction for that one, but good to see it. Um, and then in the co-main event, Koji Tanaka, Koji. Uh, we'll be taking on Kazuma Sone. And have you guys seen the big ass sign that they got for him there? What is it? Emperor Kuji? Kind of cool. The guy is very popular despite not having the best luck lately. And what he said, he's going to retire if he loses this fight. So we'll see if he holds true to that if it does happen. But I'm not so sure that he's going to end up losing because taking on Sone here, who. This is going to be a kickboxing match, and I don't think he's kickboxed too recently. More of an MMA guy. One in six in his last seven fights, and his last time out, he was iced, completely iced by uh, Yamashita in 27 seconds. Funny enough, at Ryzen 27. So, Koji should be able to beat him. <laughs> With all things considered, he, yeah, he, he he's, he's going to win, right? But... Crazier things have happened. Koji did have a competitive, <laughs> crazy special rules boxing match against Gomi that he lost. I, th I think he lost that. Either way, it was uh, too close. Closer than it should have been, all things considered. <laughs> or maybe the Fireball Kid just still has some left in the tank. But I'm going to lean towards the opposite of that. So, um, And then Koji, of course, did not you know, end up winning the the... The kickboxing tournament that he was in, the, the what, the kick, rise and kick tournament, and very tough competition in that one as well. So we'll see. I think this is not a layup, but definitely fight he should win. So Koji is going to be the pick there. Then we get to the main event, the rematch, the return of Reina, and the return of Miyu. Let's give Miyu some love here, you guys, because it's been the Reina show in the build up to this rematch. Uh, Miyu, it's going to be her first fight of the year as well. She hasn't fought since the Rather rough title defeat to Ayaka Masaki, but it's Ayaka Masaki. What are you going to do? Um, I guess be on the receiving end of highlight reel finishes. That's what happened to Miyu. But now she's back. Uh, been training at Crazy B for, I believe, this entire camp because she has not went back to Guam. 
So that's an interesting little wrinkle considering she hadn't been there for a little bit, at least the Hamasaki fight. Been training with Itsuki Hirata as well as Siwu Park, among others. A little bit different, a little bit more ladies in the mix, I believe, uh, at Crazy B as opposed to back in Guam. And then Reina has also changed things up where she was training a little bit at Brave with Kazuyuki Miyata, who the Olympic 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 wrestler back in his day. So pretty good person to train with for one of the best wrestlers, if not the best wrestler in your division, which is Miyu. Um, and seeing how the first fight went, Reina did get taken down, but she pulled off a submission. And it's funny because before speaking to Reina uh, ahead of this fight, I thought this was going to be kind of a walk in the park for, for Miyu. At least I expected it to be because you look at Reina's last fight against Emi Tamimatsu. Emi had a pretty good amount of success against her. You even got her down. There was a bit of worry there for a moment. Nothing too serious, but it happened. And Emmy and the back end of her career, a fantastic, you know, pioneer for the women. Um, very good in her own right. But I think we're seeing that she's kind of at the tail end, obviously. And she put up a good fight against Reina, which should not have been the case. So maybe a little bit unmotivated. And then Reina had the, the speech afterwards where it sounded like she was maybe going to hang it up soon. But instead, she's back now and sounds like she wants to keep on going. Not for maybe the longest time ever, but at least until 2023. That is what she said to me. She said to a couple other people as well. So it sounds like she's reignited and the time away has made her more, more hungry to fight again, along with the new training preparations. It's still training with AACC. Obviously, uh, I think Hamasaki is going to be in her corner and then uh, Mr. Abeane himself. So a motivated Reina, one that is requiring herself to get finishes now and training with somebody who's not the worst wrestler ever. Um, those are very good signs. And I think that if she can defend these takedowns that Miyu will imminently go for, she should be able to have her way on the feet because Reina is one of the best strikers in MMA. When she's on, she is fucking on and dangerous. Work the body, all that kind of stuff. Some vintage Reina, I have a feeling will come out. But even if if she can't defend the takedowns, right? She still submitted Miyu the first time and should be able to do so again. And she'll have three rounds to do so because Miu has never got a finish in her MMA career. Maybe today will be the day, but I don't know about that. Just seems seems like a tough ask, but anything is possible. All things considered, though, what we know seems like Reyna is going to be coming into this one uh, very well prepared, very ready to go. And, you know, things have been it's been a little bit of maybe a more dramatic change up for Miu here um to to go into this rematch which uh for reina has some title implications you know if if reina can pull it off then that'd be four in a row yes not at adam weight but it should be and that's the goal ultimately right so um yeah Either way, you guys, all right, we can wrap it up there. I am going to take Reyna in the end. I see that the show is coming back on now, so perfect timing. I did I did great there. What about that time management? Watch the clock, why don't you? So until next time, you guys, appreciate you so much for tuning in. Don't for, forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell for more stuff from the scrap. WMA Today podcast every Monday with myself and Steve King, where we talk about the women exclusively, everything going on in the world, recapping and the news, and the previews, and all that good stuff. Um, and yeah, and plenty of other types of content here, discussion, and what have you. So, all right. Enjoy the rest of Rising 32, you guys. We will see you next time. Appreciate it so much. Um, yeah, yeah. We'll leave it there. <laughs> see ya.